Hey up everybody and welcome back. Well, things are very much as they were last week. We're all sitting around at home, which is showing in the number of people who are getting bored enough to watch the videos. Uh, you remember, well, it's only a couple of weeks ago, I guess, we were looking towards getting 5,000 subscribers. Well, now I have something like 5,160. I get two or three a day, every day. So I say, it must be pretty bored. But anyway, welcome to everybody that's new to the channel. Uh, basically what we do here is I potter about in my workshop as my hobby and you look over my shoulder. So that's it. And I have a penchant for, well, two things. One for making things that are different and two for making things that are cheap. Hence this. Every bit of this came off the shelf, as you know, who've been watching. All right, so let's, uh, let's press on. Can't think of anything else to say. Hopefully you're all still keeping safe and what have you. Um, finish this side. We're going to go over to the other side to do the chain guide. Probably a chain guard and the prop stand. And then after that, I've just been thinking about it, but the only other thing I think of is the actual saddle. And, uh, oh, let me show you something. Hold on a second. Ah. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, I decided I didn't like the Kawasaki KDX saddle, it was too big. Didn't fit in with the, what, the look I wanted. So you can get B50 MX saddles, but they're about $300. And as you know, when I got the one done for the Enfield, a sort of good quality upholsterer, even if you've made the base and everything, still charges an arm and a leg. So when I checked, I was able to get a new seat cover for $75. It's very nice as well. It's nicely made and it comes with the clips. The only thing I've got to get is the foam and obviously a bit of foam off the internet is going to cost next to nothing. I'll make an alloy base for it so we're good I think for the saddle. Right and then we're about done. Then it's got to be working on the engine and uh, obviously I'll sort of bronze the bits I can't get at and any of those little jobs that I had to do like the captive nuts behind here I can't get at them so I'll do those and then uh, paint it the mystery colour all right so let's uh, let's get on with this week and the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little demonstration which you may like to time because I've had a number of comments people seem to be fixating on the oil filler now as you know I can't screw it all the way out with the pipe here. The pipe's not touching it or anything like that, which is what I was wanting. But because it's like a cross piece on to screw it out, it won't come out. So everybody's come up, well not everybody, a bunch of people have come up with ideas about what I can do. Well, I'm going to give you a demonstration to show you that this is not something particularly onerous. How often am I going to change the oil? Everything went together nicely, looks exactly the way I want. I don't want big bumps or curls to get round this thing. So anyway, as I say, demonstration. This is what we need to do. Let's say it was six months ago when I changed the oil. Let's say it was even a month ago when I changed the oil because I'm actually racing. So what have we got? Well, normally we'd have a captive bolt on the back of that, nut rather. So we'd start, we'd put that in there and we twiddle that a little bit like that so that it came off change the oil I don't honestly see that as being a problem so please no more ideas about how to get around this um, I don't think it's an item that's worth giving a second thought to. All right. I mean, there we go. That's back on. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. Tighten these up. I don't have to take the exhaust off. It just swivels out the way. So there it is. Off and back on. Enough said. Let's go around the other side. Right. So let's have a look over here. First of all, you may have noticed when I was sitting down doing the introduction, I was wearing my brown coat. And you may have been wondering where it or the black one's been. Well, I had to put buttons on and give them a wash. And every day when I finished here, I forgot to take it up to the house. So eventually, I remembered. So we're back. Okay. On this side, as I mentioned, 
We're going to put the prop stand because the other side's a bit busy. We've got the brake and all sorts of things. So we're going to put a prop stand on here. Uh, it would have gone there. No, that was for the brake. The prop stand was right down low. I'm saying I'm pointing off the camera again, aren't I? Anyway, let's just say that the original prop stand mount was sawn off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the chain guard. I'll put a chain on so we can see where it goes. But the B50MX, I'm going to make it the wrong way around, had a chain guide like that. So you just for the chain to run in. Now, that's the bracket for it there. And here, it bolted onto the brake drum. But of course we can't do that. So when I've got the chain on, and I know what's what, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this and angle it up and put a bracket on here like that wherever it needs to be for the chain okay now I've just been looking in the parts book and a chain guard is not listed for the MX so I don't know I've got a bracket up there I don't know if that's in camera or not but anyway there's a bracket up there um, for on the sort of SS and what have you the bikes that did have the chain guard but this one didn't come with one so we'll give that some thought uh, while we're doing this so first of all let me put a chain on right now I'll put a chain on and that is the chain guide that the B50MX had on it uh, as I say it goes on that bracket there before you make a comment I was wrong before it doesn't bolt onto the brake drum of course it brake bolts onto the brake plate just a slip of the tongue so that goes on there now as I say what I was thinking of doing was shortening it well I could do two, two things I could shorten this put a bracket on or I could probably still shorten a little a bit but cut a little V out and kink it up there slightly but I've also been thinking that I could make it pivot, I could put a roller in here, put a spring on it, say cut it off there, put a spring on it, you know, because I could have it down there with the roller underneath. And not only have it as a guide, but as a tensioner as well. Don't know. Plus, can you see down this end? Yeah. Actually, this chain is just touching on the engine spacer. Now it's only it's only just touching, and that's at rest. I've actually got the engine jacked up. So when we've got the weight on and everything, it's going to be down. It's going to be up a bit anyway because the wheel's going to come up. But also, I've got this spacer inch diameter. 10 millimeter bolt which is less than half an inch so I could probably take it down to being three quarters and it'd be ample and that would maybe clear it or what I was thinking of doing was sleeving it with one of these slippery type hard plastic tubes that I have it's HDPE or one of the strange lubricated polymers that's um, inch OD three quarter ID so I could turn that down to three quarters fractionally under slide that on and then on those occasions when this chain actually came down it would not only is this very uh, re resistant to wear it would actually spin so I think I'll do that there that's the easiest way to solve that uh, in fact I might take that out now and do that while I think about whether I want to put chain gather because the other thing is called oh sorry sorry people um this is just on a bolt so there's not much surface for this to be turning on really you know it needs to be in a sleeve so that it's not doing this just like with the back brake pedal just like with the uh prop stand we don't just want two flat pieces of plate with a bolt so that they're just like that we need to have a tube 
that it runs on. And I'm just trying to make things simple. I could drill that out. That is um, it's a 3 8 bolt that's in it. So what I could do is drill that out to half inch. That's quite thick actually. That is... Where did I do my ruler? Hang about people. I'm back. Uh, that's actual two thicknesses of plate. It's welded on both sides. So it is in actual fact... That's 3 8 thick. And this is double thickness as well. So that's... 5 sixteenths. I could drill them both out to half inch, slip a piece of half inch tube in there, and um, run them on that. Hmm. What would be the best way to do that? I could weld the piece of half inch into there or just hmm, not sure about that we'll have to give that some serious thought and then as I say I just drill and put a little roller in there you can get those I can get an ordinary roller or I could get a I was going to say proper but basically they're just sold for chain rollers at the trials places and what have you but I'm sure they just get them from a standard roller supplier put that down like that who knows who knows anyway let me do this thing if I can get this out of here easily because I don't want to start dismantling everything I can always do it later but I'll uh, I'll do that so there's the piece done I've Turn that down to three quarters, so it's still a good uh, surface for the the engine mounting, and it just to say sticks out at each end, and that just nicely turns. So I think that'll solve that problem. Let me put it in. There it is back in, and it's tightened up. I'll put a little black mark on just to make it easier to see. And that's just, it's not too loose, but it just nicely turns and we keep that lubricated on the inside. Be fine if the chain drops on it. Okay, let's get back to our chain guard. No, I'm wrong again, our chain guide. Now, I spent some time last night, after the power came back on, we had a power cut for about five hours. We had to cook dinner on our little camping stove. I looked at a bunch of pictures of scramblers from the 60s and not one of them had chain tension so we're not going to put a chain tension I also after a bit of searching found a picture of a B50 MX the left hand side isn't it funny how they always show the right hand side of bikes because I wanted to know where this went well it went directly underneath this so it goes about there okay now that we are going to put a bracket and I get the end of my pen we are going to put a bracket think about there okay so see this has got a great big hole at this end because it went on this big bolt in the brake plate so we are going to cut this off and round the end to make it nice like that and then we'll put a straight bit up there and our straight bit wants to be inch and a quarter so let me go and cut that off and cut a bit of this inch and a quarter with a slight angle which we'll come back and look at and uh, we can make ourselves a chain guide. So let me go and do a little bit of hack sewing. There it is cut. I've got a little, nice little turn at the bottom. So all I need to do now is 
actually, if I put a curve in this, that will work well. So let me just, all I'll do is, is that. I'll find myself something round to mark that up nicer. So let me go and cut that. And what we'll do is we'll weld it on there. And then we'll hold it up there, make our little bracket, bolt our bracket to that, and then we can bronze it on there. And then we've got our chain guide. So I've drilled a hole in that, and I've chamfered both sides. So that's going to go on there like that. Then, basically, I'll make another one of those for there. We'll weld this on here. And then I say we can bolt the two pieces together and bronze that in situ and we know we're going to be all right. So let me go and, uh, well, let's see how big a oh, I left my ruler off of there, would you believe? I'll go and get my ruler. I'll measure how big a piece I need for here. That's actually going to be just a little shorter than that. And then we'll make that and get everything welded together. And I made the other little bit, which was just slightly smaller. So we know that's going to go there. So do we want to put this inside or the outside? I think on the outside. Let's just put a 3 8 bolt through that. See how it looks. And there's of course. <laughs> these are stainless steel, so I'm not going to bolt this together with these when I weld it. Short one goes to the top. So that is going to go. Slightly at an angle like that. Come on now. Be a good boy. So that's going to go on there like that. So let me go and weld that and I'll just use a clamp to hold that and we'll uh, see if we can do some upside down bronze in there to just tack that on and that's one of the things I'll bronze on completely when we take the bike apart. Right now, there's that welded on. I ground the weld off. We want that to look like one piece. Oh, I suppose we should have had a little curl in there as well. But So that is going to go to that, which we will put. Oh, look at that. I can't get that in there. Damn. I was hoping to use one of those clamps. So we'll have to use... I think... Will that go in there? Yes. I'll use a mole grip type. Which are called vice grips here. Okay, uh, we said we were going to put this on the outside. Now I'm going to put where's it I'm going to put the bolt in. There's a thought. Have we got enough space on the other side for a nut? Yes. Oh, hang on. Didn't I say we were going to put this on this side? Yes, you did. That's good. That gives us even more space. Now then, got to take a bit more yellow paint off. Hold on while I get a file. Right, let's start again. Be... Up you go, mister. Let's uh, 
Take the nut a little so we can get it. Get there a bit more. Goes like that. Why is it always too much or too much little? That is touching that bloody sprocket. I thought something was holding me out here. Got a thinner one. Right, I think we're ready. It's been one of those days. I actually went out today to get a change my argon bottle. And all the way down, I like to have a big music fan. All the way down, I was trying to listen to a CD and I kept getting an error message on the CD player in the pickup. And uh, I was thinking, oh, you know, damn, now the CD player's packed up. And I forgot it was a set that I had with me, the DVD of the concert and the CD of the concert, and I was putting the DVD in. So there you go. Right, let's have a look. Gloves. Got me welding shield on, look. Got everything switched on. Got a little bit of bronzing rod. Got my foot pedal. Ah, okay. Yep. We can do it with the torch upside down. Now, I might get in front of you here, but mind your eyes. There we go. Right, that's holding that. Ooh. Just do this end so it's all held nicely. Eyes again. See, look how tight I am. Never throw a bit of rod away. That's not too shabby. All right, so we have our chain guide on. Let me change hats. Over there. I don't want to get all oily on my TIG welding gloves. I don't want to get all oily on my hands either. That's going to go through there, it's going to go on there like thusly, and now we have our chain guard and it's not touching, it's nicely central, very good, okay, next thing is prop stand, we're running out of space to put it aren't we, it's going to have to be right, well hang on, it's going to have to be right there. Unless I do weld a piece on there and put it on there. Whoa. Give that some thought. Okay, as I say, I was out all morning, so that actually is it for the day. So I will think of that overnight, and then not tomorrow, or the day after, which is going to be Thursday, we'll be back and we will do a prop stand. Right now, today is actually Friday because I spent an entirely wasted Thursday trying to unplug the drain from the kitchen sinks which required me to crawl around under the 
uh, house the back part which is the new part which only has a crawl space so eventually I had to get a plumber in because the dimwit who did the house put so many right angle bends and T pieces in couldn't even get the snake through anyway while Jensen was working on his project I stuck a couple of things on just to see what they look like found a bit of foam to form up the saddle just pop the side paddle on looking quite nice isn't it this is going to be a nice cobby looking machine all right if you're wondering what this is i am going to build a frame jig now i looked at a lot of i'll do a whole uh video on it when i build it but i'll tell you i looked at a whole bunch of videos with frame jigs and strangely enough most of them were for building rigid end bikes and they saw it all had a double bottom rail and uh at this end, can you see this end? You must be able to see. Yeah, sort of at this end, they have a post with the adjustable bit for mounting the, the headstock. Well, I got thinking about it and I thought, you know, a lot of times, like with this one, I'm starting with the wheels. So I'm going to make it a universal one. When it's bolted up one way, it's going to be like that with the post, and I can set things for the swinging arm mounts and so on. When I'm doing a bike like that, I'm going to have it so that the two rails can be brought together. Take this post out. The two rails can be brought together and the wheels can sit in. So I can set the wheel base. I know the wheels are going to be straight, you know, make some little spacing pieces to take up the difference in width of the rims front and rear. And, uh, you know, like say I'm doing the end field, I've got my wheels. I can put the wheels in, even put the forks on, I'm going to make some way of sort of holding the forks at the angle I want, I can stick the engine on, I can build the whole frame around it, or I can do it the ordinary way with the thing and start with the headstock and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, that is um, going to be forthcoming. Right, so let's go and do the prop stand. Right now, prop stand. Well you've seen me make a couple of these before, so we won't go into too much detail. Start off as always with a cardboard template. See it's got two sides just nicely shaped. Little curve to go around there and this you see will go wherever we need it. So when we get around to putting this on as you've seen before I'll actually with the straps that hold the bike to the table will tilt the bike to the the position we want it to be when it's on its stand and then we'll put that on because by then we'll have made the leg as well and the leg goes on this now just as I was talking about this here we don't just want the leg to be like that it's got to have a nice wide contact area so the leg is going to be three quarter inch chromoly so that is just fractionally more than three quarters so that when that's on we can get a nice joint round it and that runs on this and this I don't know whether it shows up is actually seven eighths and this is fractionally less so we've got about 15 thou showing at each end so that we can grip it tightly when we put the bolt through and that will still turn so as always start off with our cardboard template and then we'll make one out of steel so I've got to cut this little bit out do the couple of bends and drill these holes right so let me go and do that and I'll come back with the finished template there's the piece uh, cut to shape and the holes drilled and I've got my marks on this side to do my bending so let me go and just I'm just going to do this in the vise um, I don't know if I can get it in the actual bender that goes in the in the press because it's so small. I'll check and maybe bring you back. Right, we're going to try a little experiment. This is a thing I made recently. It's just a piece of angle bolted onto a bolted welded onto a nice uh, thick base. I did it to bend some to straighten something, but um, and I was going to take it back off this just to undo the welding, but then it suddenly struck me it was like a nice long V block. Road, uh, rounds fit in that perfectly so that might give us the smaller 
angle we need or the smaller depth of bend that we need so let's have a go and if we mess it up we cut another little bit it's not the end of the world I couldn't remember whether I switched the record button on then and I didn't want to be talking to myself heaven forbid I should talk to myself see what happens. Of course it's never the first bend that's the problem, it's the second one. Will it clear? Okay, so there's number one. It's all very nice. So let's see if we can do number two. See, this comes up and touches on that if the part at the bottom isn't wide enough. But it can give you a, such a good start, you can put it in the vase and finish it off. You might just get this. It's just touching now. Oh! Okay, there we go. Where are we? We filmed down there. Let's see what it's like with this spacing piece. Right, well that worked as far as the limitations of the operator went. I still didn't quite bend it exactly right to get the width I wanted here. So what I did was I got a piece, I wanted seven eighths. So I got a piece of seven eighths to go in there and I just squeezed it up in the vise which has given me this little curve which doesn't matter actually because it it makes it a nice fit on there but anyway there it is now our piece goes in whoop, in there now when it has a bolt in see even when that's tightened up this piece that the leg is going to be on can still turn so that's going to go on there like thus I might just take a little bit more out of there to slightly angle it that way because if it goes down straight like that there'll be too much of a tendency for it to flip back up with the spring I want it to go back like that so let me just go and file a bit more out of there and then I'll bring it back right then I've slanted it a little bit cut a bit out of the back so we're going to uh, just pop a bolt in, make sure everything, make sure I haven't taken too much off here so that this is touching that, which it's not. But now as you can see, we have a little slant backwards. So with the extension of the leg, that's going to be well forward of this pivot point. So it's not going to be tending to fall, be pulled back by the spring. Okay, so now, let me zoom you out. What we're going to do is we're going to take this off. I've got a spring ready. Actually, this is a B50 spring. We're going to take this stand away so that it's just on the tie downs on the handlebars. I'm going to lead it over until I get to where I want it to be, the angle I want it to lean at. And then we can measure how long a leg we need. We'll cut the leg off, cut the leg off. We'll cut the leg to length, we'll bronze it onto this piece and then we can start sorting out exactly where we want it. Now, I think we're probably going to have to put a bit of a dog leg in this because of this. We don't want that pointing out too much of an angle, but that's going to be against there nothing ever goes right this is always the thing with uh, with all specials that 
you can't plan for every eventuality so sometimes you can't forget the things but I think what we can do is just we'll put a little bit of a bend in it there so it comes down anyway we'll look at it so first of all let's get ourselves canted over where we want to be now I've leaned this over to where I think is about the angle I want it I've got that held on with a breath with a magnetic clamp this is a piece of three quarter inch um, electrical conduit plastic stuff PVC and it's very handy for deciding where you're going to be so I think first of all I actually need that back a little bit now that might be handy because oh we might just clear if I put it like that I might have to put a very slight bend in it and it'll clear so that would go like that so it wants to be a shade longer than that now a shade longer isn't very technical is it so inch and a quarter so let me go and uh, find a I've got lots of bits of this laid around see if I've got one slightly longer and that'll that'll show us how long we want to be actually belay that we're only talking an inch or so so what I'm going to do is just cut a piece of three quarter that extra inch long We'll bronze it onto there and then we'll offer it up and see what's what. If need be, when we put the foot on, we could even extend it a little bit. So let me go and cut a piece of three quarter tube. Now then, I bronze that on there. So that's going to go in there. Actually, that's uh, just about spot on. Let me see if I can move this round to hold it differently That I think is about right. Put a foot on it. Now the question is that might just swing up out of the way, but that is that is where I want that to be. So I've got a little bit of felt tip pen on there from when I did my thing. I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll bronze that on there. Now I've moved it back a safe distance from the welder. So it sells ready. Uh, right, mind your eyes. So let's let that cool down. Right, it's cooled down. I put a bolt in, tightened it up, and all we're catching on there is this little piece, which is actually an extra piece welded on here to catch the bolt head. So I'm going to go and grind that off, and I think we'll find that that then 
will flip up out of the way. I should have run the video while I was putting this back on. I put both of those nuts on straight away. How about that? Right, so we need to put a foot on there, but the next thing obviously is where we're going to put our spring, and I may have put this too far back to be able to get the spring on. Oh, shoot. Let's have a look. No, it's alright. Dim and fret. Just. Only just though. I'll put that on its pin there, and that on its pin there, that's holding that back, and it's going to be at an angle to hold that back as well. Phew! Alright, let me go and turn up two little pins, and then we're going to drill a couple of holes, one there, and one there, put the pins in. So there's our pin, with the... Uh, what have I done with this? Oh god. Hold on a second. I knew if I put it up there I'd forget it. And I put it there so I'd know where it was. Anyway, that little bit is to go in the hole that we're going to drill so that we're not trying to just press it on and it's a nice tight fit. And then that's going to go on there into that, like that. So we reckoned we want this to be there. So that ain't going to be hand in the way again, is it? Probably just there. If I drill a hole there, we should be all right. Oh, well, anyway, we'll see. There, I've got a little start a hole. So now we'll drill a quarter inch. Like that. And then we want that to be a tight fit which it is. See that's why I put that little bit on. I don't have to worry about holding it while I weld it or bronze it or whatever. Plus it makes it a lot stronger of course because it's actually in the tube. So that's going to go on there and that's going to go on there. We're just going to miss and I think there'll be just enough side pull on that. If not we'll have to cut it off and do it again. Anyway let me uh, get that bronzed on and do the one for the bottom because actually I'm running out of battery on the camera as well. Okay, camera's still working. Right, so that's going to go like that. I've made the one for there. So we're going to want it there like that. And it's got to be stretched a little bit. So... Come on, pen. Make sure it stays clear of that. We'll put it there. Right, I won't show you me drilling this hole because that'll use a battery. So there's that one knocked into there. And as you can see, we've just got to uh, pull it down a bit to get it on there. Should be just because this is a big string. Spring, it doesn't need to be stretched very far. So let me bronze that. Right, let's see if I've got enough uh, battery for you to see me putting this spring on. Uh, put that on there. What I'm going to try and do is push it up. And I think its shortest distance is up here. There we go, now let's see, have we got... That's good, will it hold it down? Yes! And it's not touching there. 
Whoa, we just squeaked in on that one. All right, I have to put a foot on it, but um, that's all I've got time for today. So I've bronzed a foot on there, but I'm going to show you something before we finish up because I know the eagle-eyed among you will have been saying, is that going to catch on there when the suspension moves? So what we're going to do, look, I've already taken the one off the other side. We're going to uh, try and do this without getting in the way. I'm going to make sure it doesn't suddenly go loose on the straps. Oh, there's feel all right. As you can see, it's pivoting around it. And the other thing is, this is in the hole that's bringing the swinging arm all the way up here. So this is actually, as I adjust the chain, gonna come further this way. So we've got lots and lots of space. All right, that's it for this week. Uh, as our new exit says, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.